Hybrid brooms are terrific flowering shrubs for the early part of the summer, especially when you see them like this one, which is called Cytisus Berkwoodi, and you look at this mass of flowers that are carried on plants that get to about five foot high. And as you see, whenever all of these flowers come out, they're carried in so much profusion, you can hardly see anything else except the flowers. What's interesting about these, of course, is they're called brooms because the ancestors of these hybrids are, were many years ago cut and tied together to make a sweeping tool, a bism as we sometimes call them, or of course as brooms. Now, many years on, these are interspecific hybrids that are made up of several different species. That's important because by making the hybrids it gives us other colours besides the commonly encountered species which is yellow, but also it's important to mention that because these are complex hybrids they do not set seed like the ordinary Cytisus scoparius, the one that they call the Scotch broom. It sets massive amounts of seeds and is invasive. These, on the other hand, set very little of any seeds and therefore they're not really a problem in our garden. And I can tell you after growing these for many years, I've really never seen any kind of seed, uh, seedling issues with them whatsoever. This particular variety was raised by the Birkwood brothers in Park Farm Nurseries in England many years ago. Albert and Arthur Birkwood were well known for working on hybrid shrubs and this is probably one of the best known shrubs that they introduced from their nursery. What's really good about brooms is that they're easy to grow in a sunny well-drained site and they're wonderful for putting in elevated places like raised banks and hillsides. Anywhere where there's plenty of air movement but above all plenty of good drainage. You see the ancestors of these plants grow in high upland areas where there's thin rocky gravelly soil and they're able because they're part of the pea and bean family to take nitrogen out of the air and fix it at the roots. That means you don't have to worry about giving them any fertilizer, they'll do just fine on their own. You'll find that they make lots of luxuriant growth in the early part of the year, then the next spring out they come with loads of buds that then develop into these fabulous flowers. One thing's very important about growing them, and that's a technique that I want you to be sure to be try to replicate at home and that is that whenever these plants finish flowering they grow out and make young soft juvenile growth and it's on that growth that they then flower the following year. So in other words to get the best from the plants it's important that you go in after they finish flowering and trim them back taking about two-thirds off the top of the plants. That's fairly severe but you go in and just cut off the top of them about where my hand is right now at about eight or nine inches high, then you'll find they'll make lots of luxuriant growth, which is where they carry all of these gorgeous flowers the following year. If you do that, you'll find your plants will be shorter and bushier, they'll be longer lived, and of course, they'll carry even more flowers. Sometimes I see in people's gardens long leggy plants that haven't been pruned, and that's where it's important just to carry out that technique. Other than that, you'll find them really easy to grow. They're nicely fragrant, and of course, pollinating insects love to come and visit these sweet pea-like flowers too. This is Cytisus berkwoodi, a lovely hybrid with this gorgeous red and cerise-colored flowers.